Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today I have a deep dive for you on uh, an, <laughs> this album, which of course that doesn't help you out at all. Uh, this album, here we go. I actually took all the coins, uh, not the coins, but the sheets out so we can get a closer look. But we're going to take a deeper dive today on uh, Indian Head Sense, and I'm going to walk you through the series a little bit here. You can see I've got the different sheets. And I was really excited to pick this collection up because, um, well, mostly because I don't see complete sets too frequently. And also, uh, it's an opportunity for us to take a closer look at a set that somebody took the time to make, uh, a, you know, a nice, nice set together. Because what we're going to see as I look at the different coins in here, what you're going to see is that almost all of the coins uh, in here are fine, very fine, extra fine. So you're going to see, for the most part, strong liberties on the Indians. Um, sometimes a lot of feather detail, like this 1863 is a little bit nicer grade. You know, that's probably more of an extra fine. These copper nickel coins, they were, they're, so, they're kind of a soft struck coin. But well, let's go, let's rewind here just for a second and head back up to these uh, flying eagle scents. So you've got the 1857 and the 58 large letters and small letters. And I don't think I've ever really talked about the difference on these, but the small letters, large letters, the thing to look at on that is the A and the M in America, America. So you see on the smaller letters, the A and the M, there's a big old gap there. And then on the larger letters, the A and the M, they touch. And that's the easiest place. Now all the lettering is larger. I mean, just look at the word of, and then of, you can kind of tell the difference in the size, but it's easiest on um, on those certain areas. And of course, this is what the reverse of those flying eagle pennies look like. I always enjoyed these. Now, for those of you who don't know, I think I've mentioned this before, uh, Indian scents were my first love. When I was a uh, teenager, this is the set that I collected. Well, not, not, not this set, but you know, yes, Indian pennies. So most of your flying eagle pennies, if you want to collect them in a very fine to extra fine, you know they're going to be anywhere from about fifty bucks to hundred bucks each on coins like that. The set breaks down almost into little mini segments because after that you have the copper nickel coins, and the copper nickel coins. Most of these, if you want to collect in VF to XF grade or fine to VF, really, you know you get anywhere from like a twenty-five to forty dollar type coin, and so. There's variation, of course. Each coin's different. Of course, this 1863 is a much nicer grade. Let's just look at the reverse on that a little bit closer. On that, you can just see all the detail up into the shield, and on the on the on uh, the arrows, and on the wreath. Now let's just compare it to the one next to it, which was a, a touch lower grade. Actually, that one looks really strong. This one, okay. I was talking about strike before. You see how it's really hard to see any of the Liberty on there, but you saw how much detail was on the reverse of that coin. I'm actually gonna have to go back to the 1862 to find one that has more wear on it. And once again, there's a lot of flatness in this coin to start with, so it's hard to tell. I'm gonna look at the reverse of that same coin. And okay, now you can start to see the flatness in the shield and the wear in the shield compared to uh, the 1863 and the 1864. So, one other anomaly I need to point out is that in 1859, the reverse was completely different. You see that? And so there's actually some pattern issues that are like mix and match where you have the wrong reverse with a different date. So you have like an 1860 uh, obverse with 1859 reverse. There's, there's a few different things like that out there. Um, one last anomaly here, uh, anomaly, just historical note on these coins that were made out of copper nickel these were actually the first coins that were referred to as nickels uh, before we had the the nickels we know the five cent pieces that came uh, these these Indian uh, the flying eagle pennies rather were the first nickel all right so once you get out of the copper nickel era you get into the 64 bronze so in 64 they had the copper nickel then they have the bronze and then they have the bronze with the L so this is a stylized difference on here and one of the things that a lot of people get lower grade versions of this coin and you know you may or may not be able to see the L. The L is located on the 
ribbon beneath the last feather. So let's look right underneath that last feather. You see that little dot? That's an L. Now the way you can tell on these, of course, is if you can't see the L, look at the trunk, the truncation there, the bust of the Indian. It comes to this above the one in the date. It comes to this nice, fine, sharp point. And on the non-Ls, it's rounded, it's blunt. And uh, I'm going to ban for all my drug use terms here. But uh, when you get into these guys, this 1864L is actually a really high grade for one of those. You know, and that's um, probably a $200 type coin. But most of your 64s and 65s are coins that you can pick up in the, you know, maybe $50 range for a nicer middle grade coin. And then you get into all this post Civil War stuff, and you got the next group of dates that you run into that have really similar price points are going to be uh, that 66 through this, um, yeah, 66 pretty much all the way through to the 72. Um, well, it's. It's a little tricky. So 66 and 68, 66, 7, and 8, and then actually you get to 69, 70, 71, 72. They all kind of fall in the same category, but I had separated them out a little bit, the 66, 67, 68, uh, as maybe not quite as rare. But a lot of these coins, if you want to get a nice VF to XF coin, you're going to be dropping, you know, 100 to $150 on the 66 through 68. And then there's a little bit of a price jump on the 69 through 72 where they're more like 150 to 200 dollar type coins for the same for kind of the same grade quality there are a lot of varieties on these that guys look for so you can get your 69 over 69 variety of course this 69 is just your standard 69 i'm having a hard time getting the film just right because i'm trying to hold an entire board here and it's just not working out as well as when I try to hold one coin. But this series, this is a fun series. This, this, all this stuff that's after the Civil War, uh, those 1870s, these are so hard to get real nice examples. One of the things that's so impressive about this collection is that almost all of these coins have a nice original look to them. They have not been, been cleaned or played with, which is really unusual for, for coins from that time period to try to get them uh, to try to get really nice ones. All right, so we go into 73, 74. So then you get this down tick after 72, where you start seeing the prices drop a little bit on the coins. 72, 3, 4, 5, and 6, somewhere, somewhere kind of in that time frame, where you'll start to see the coins trade more in the maybe $50 to $100 range for kind of the same thing for kind of the same grade. And let me just show you really quick in the red book kind of what happened on those coins where you've got you know all these coins in here from uh, the 60s there's you know, some high mintages there there's so 66 you got a lot of these coins here are just on, under 10 million 5 million 4 million you see them drop into the 70s 71 2 3 then at 72 yeah so see those See those mintages drop from 10 million into six, five, three, four million, and then all of a sudden you jump up to 11 million. And then when you get into after that, you get into the 74, five, and all of a sudden you're back into these like 14, 13 million. And then we're going to see another break. So we got the big guy coming up here in a second. I'm going to show you the 77 where you've got the sub million mintage, and it really puts into perspective the rarity of the 77. Maybe not the availability in the marketplace, but if you think about how few they made compared to all the other years. Because then once you hop back into the 70s, uh, the late 70s, you're going to see all these mintages in the you know, 30, 40 million range. They drop back down a little bit after that, but then they hop right back up and you're into the 30, 40, 50 million range on most of the dates until you hop ahead. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here as long as we got the book out. Then all of a sudden you see the mintages on uh, the 08S and the 09S, which by the way, a lot of people don't realize that the 09S actually has a lower mintage than the 77, because the 77 is still considered the Grand Poobah. Um, I think one of the things is a lot of people save the 09S because it was the last year of issue, 
the survival rate is probably a lot higher on that than the 77, which lived through all kinds of economic, all kinds of economic turmoil. So the next thing we want to do is take a good look at that 77. I know you guys have been waiting patiently to take a good close look at that 77 and see how much meat it has on the bones. And uh, overall, it is a really nice example. You can make out lettering in the Liberty. Uh, you can make out feathers. Uh, this, the date, of course, is super strong. Let me turn it over and get the correct, the correct coin to look at here because when you're dealing with a board, you want to make sure you look at the right one. Now, this has the typical and always what you want to see, that weak, weak end right in the center. Actually, both ends, really. So the bottom of the end in one and then just that very top portion of the end in scent are going to be flat, 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 just like, a, like there's some type of a weak spot there. And then when you look at the sevens, one of the things to look at, and this is a lot more subtle, but that second seven is just like a smidgen lower uh, than the seven, than the first seven. It just drops down just a hair. And so that's one of the things you want to look at. So this, of course, this coin, along with some of the ones probably from the late 60s and early 70s, I'll probably go ahead and get them certified just for the fun of it. But, you know, this coin in depending on what what grade you, you want to call it a vf you know that's a thousand to fourteen hundred dollar coin depending on what type of vf it comes back so we're going to move on to the 1870s which you start to run into uh pretty much for the next two decades the 78 through the 86 if you want to get nice uh very fine extra fine coins on those dates you can find them and you can get them oftentimes in the 10 to 20 dollar range depends a little bit from date to date because each date's a little different that 81 is really pretty nice there look at that they put a little bit extra something into that guy the full liberty and uh you've got strong feathers strong date all the way around you can see when it pops up compared to the other ones just how nice it is the 82 a little bit bright i mean that probably has a light cleaning to it at some point in time but nothing that changed the color really on those pennies you don't want it changing color on you and uh, then we got 1883 and 4 and I'm not gonna completely fast forward but once you get after those 80s once you get in about 87 then you've got another two decades these 86 is type 1 and 2 um, have a little bit higher price but before I get into the 87 and beyond we got to pause on these 86s so you can see the difference between the type 1 and the type 2 uh, so the type 1 so what happened is they actually shifted the entire portrait or lettering depending on how you want to look at it and so if, if you look at where the last feather drops on the headdress it's between the I and the C in America and then the second type it's between the C and the A in America and if you can't remember which is which, the shift was halfway through the year. So all you have to do is look if you have a coin that's one year before or after, or any coin before. So I can go back to the 85 and say, between the I and the C, that's type one. So anytime you forget, if you have any coin that's dated after 1886, you'll see that they're all gonna have the uh, headdress arrow between the C and the A and that's how you're going to remember uh, in case you forget which is which you can always you can always do that and and uh, that's that's kind of the that's the difference and that's also to just a little reminder of how to tell how to how to remember which one is which because it's easy to forget once you get after that 86 though you get into the 87 through basically 1908 what you run into is most of the coins you can pick up XF coins you know five bucks AUs ten bucks you know nicer AUs 15 low grade mint state coins 20 to 25 bucks you know nicer mint state coins of course they can be a lot more expensive depending on the year especially if you get um, especially if you get uh, nice red coins now one of the things that I want to just mention in here there actually are a lot of different varieties in the Indian head scent series there's a lot of different double dates and other odd ones. There's this really cool one with a one in the neck, and I can't remember what year that was. Um, but the 94, I think, is the double date year, but there's one where there's 
you can see the one just sticking right out of the Indian's neck. It's really cool. And if you want to learn more about those, of course, you can pick up Rick Snow's book on Indian sense, Flying Eagle Pennies and Indian sense. I know this is riveting. Um, all right. So once you get beyond, uh, you fast forward all the way that uh, 1887 to 1908. Now you're going to get to the end of the series where you start to hit uh, two more coins that are really worth mentioning, and that's your 1908S and your 1909S. And both of those are coins that uh, collectors really love to have. They're harder to come by. Um, that mintage on that 08S is only about a million pieces, um, which is very low as we saw compared to the other ones. That's the wrong coin. There's your S. All right, this one's a pretty nice one actually. Got a lot of detail on that coin. So usually your 08S, it's going to run you anywhere from about 100 to 200 dollars for most anything from like a you know VG to a XF. Here we get over to the 09S. These are counterfeited frequently, and by counterfeited I mean they'll they'll add the S to it, and it'll be really big and wonky looking. Um, the 09S is. Um, Pretty pricey compared to the rest of the series. Once you know the end of this series here, most of those coins are pretty affordable. Usually, if I see an album come in, it'll have a lot of these dates filled. It'll be missing a lot of the earlier dates. But an 09S, probably in the 250 to 400 dollar range. So really, between between the 09S, the 08S, and then your typical 77. Lots of times, people just have a good VG, which is like a four or five hundred dollar coin. You know, you're pretty close to a thousand bucks between those three coins. And you can put the rest of the set together, you know, for a thousand bucks without. <laughs> so, but once again, everything's about condition. How much money do you want to put into it? How much time do you want to take? I, I applaud the person who put this set together because, you know, the coins are very nice and even. Uh, they are not um, what we typically see a lot of mixed uh, grades and mixed condition which is the same thing that's redundant and we'll also see a lot of cleaned coins that's what i was going to get at you know you see a lot of bright coins that are not not how you want to see them so anyway guys i hope that helps i hope you learned a few things uh some of these coins may be available but uh like i said we're going to end up putting a number of them uh out for grading and then um got a lot of nice type stuff for uh, people putting together their indian sets so Thanks for, so much for watching, guys. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.